that favorite time of yours when we take uh, a small break from science and engineering and we still talk to each other but about something else. So I will take an example say from US, America, this, that, western countries for this. Two men are walking home after a Halloween party. <clears throat> Some of you know what is Halloween, right? It is a special uh, function in those countries where they try to dress like and ghosts and dead people and this and that, right? And uh, Halloween. And of course the party is at night. So when they are walking home after the Halloween party, it is quite late in the night. Now they say that to go home, let us take a shortcut so that uh, we don't have to walk long. But by doing this shortcut, they go towards the cemetery. You know the cemetery where dead people are buried. So they are passing near the cemetery. And they cross the cemetery because otherwise they will have to cross the whole boundary, go from one side. So they enter the cemetery, they will come back on the other side, they will be much closer to home. So in the middle of the cemetery, now they suddenly hear some tap, tap, tap. Some noise is coming. And there are some shadows and so on. Now they are coming already from a Halloween party. They are in the cemetery. It is dark and some tap tap is happening. So now they are both really afraid. They are trembling. But then they see that there is an old man with a hammer and a chisel. Hammer and a chisel. And you know a headstone. There is a grave and there is a headstone on which the name and this and that of the person is written. So they see that the, that old man is there. And with a hammer and chisel, he is working on the headstone of a grave. So suddenly their fear goes away that, oh, we were afraid. So one of the guys says, holy cow, mister, oh, you scared us half to death. We thought you were a ghost. We thought you were a ghost. But you are just a man. So what are you doing working here so late? That man replies, those fools, they misspelled my name. Joke is over. Okay then. So now we are starting with one of the bulk deformation processes. It is not the first or the second or the third. We have to do forging and rolling and extrusion and so on. So just because in the book forging is first, so we are do doing forging first, but it is not that this is the first one, that is the second one and so on. This is one of the major bulk deformation processes, right? Okay, <clears throat> forging, forging. Now, just as a joke or whatever, right? Language is critical. Forging is this huge manufacturing technique. Forgery. Forgery, same, F-O-R-G, forgery is to make illegal documents. You have a valid passport from the government, you can have a forged passport by some uh, criminal people, right? So forging is this, forgery is that. So please don't say that in the university they teach us forgery. I am learning how to do forgery. <laughs> you are learning how to do forging okay good so now forging uh, i have told you earlier also even in your villages and so on you you see if horse riding is there or camel riding is there then there is the horseshoe or the shoe a uh, camel shoe right a, st a steel plate which is used there. so if you see in your villages and so on how they are made they they have a small place where they have an air powered air powered furnace where they can heat things and they take a piece of metal and they heat it and then by hammering on it, hammering on it, they change it into a shape. So this is forging. This is forging. Forging means that you apply a hammer type of force on a piece of metal or something and change it into the desired shape. So even that very old, centuries old process which you see 
normally going on in your villages and so on is forging right so see one of the oldest and most important metalworking processes 4000 bc now we are in 2000 plus ad so that is 6000 years ago 6000 years ago forging was already there forging was already there okay forging was already there process in which material is shaped by the application of localized compressive forces exerted manually by a hammer and so on or with power hammers or by presses or special forging machines process may be carried out on materials in either hot or cold state effective method of producing many useful shapes <clears throat> typical forged parts include rivets bolts crane hooks connecting rods and so on the forged parts have good strength and good toughness they can be used reliably for highly stressed and critical applications so general introduction of forging right that whether you do it as a cold work at room temperature or whether you do it as a warm work or hot work at higher temperatures but you by hammer or press or a whole forging machine you apply enough force at the given temperature so that the material takes the shape the die and this is a very popular process the properties that are there in the materials make it very strong and very good and very long lasting so if you can do forging then you will do it generally this is the schematic diagram right the workpiece is compressed between two opposing dies so that the die shapes are imparted to the work this is the lower die piece that is the upper die piece right sometimes the upper die piece is called a cap sometimes it is called something else right and they are showing this material in a reddish form so generally it will be heated so you press it you press it and once both the pieces are exactly close together then whatever shape is there will be there right whatever shape is there in this particular one some material will be wasted also it will go outside right uh, so so that will be some extra material so this is a general schematic of the uh, hot working forging process and the two critical components if you see are force and velocity how much force are you applying and at what speed are you applying it you can apply the same force slowly 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 or boom like a hammer right so the velocity is important and the force are important both are very critical right so when you are doing so types of forging operations a is open die forging b is impression die forging and c is flashless forging so you see here there is no die actually right there this is the lower portion you can call it an anvil anvil on which you place it <clears throat> and this you can say part of the press or the ram or the hammer so this is your material and you just press it you just press it so if this material was rectangular in shape it will become a larger rectangular larger rectangle with a small thickness it if it was a square it may become a larger square with reduced thickness if it was round like a cylinder it will remain round but the dia of the cylinder will increase so in open die forging you do not <coughs> change the cross sectional shape rectangle remains rectangle square remains a square round remains round but the thickness changes and the area changes so this type of operation is open die forging impression forging impression die forging means now there is a die shape whatever die shape is there so the lower die is also cut into a shape the upper die is also cut into a shape and now when you force it is not that the uh, cross sectional shape remains the same no it will now go into the shape of the die and this is just a schematic it could be any shape you can take a plate and change it into something else this that so now a die shape will be there and you pressurize it some flash this extra material that goes out is known as a flash and later on you will have to cut it out and the remaining thing will be in the shape 
so it will it is called impression die forging when it is like open die it is like open die but there is a shape which is not the original shape of the material and then closed die closed die it is not open anymore it is not open anymore so this is called flashless forging because every time you do this impression die forging some material goes out there as a flash this flash is the waste material here it is a closed die the lower die is like this the upper die or punch is like this so the diameter outside diameter of the punch and the inside diameter of this part of the die exactly match each other so now when you force it the material goes into this shape but no material can go anywhere outside so there is no flash so you can call it a closed die forging or a better name is a flashless forging so these three are major classes now right open die forging impression die forging and flashless forging and remember i am saying it many times that the upper portion of the die is called upper die also it is called a punch also it depends right <clears throat> we are now showing you some pictures of open die forging first of all if you see here there is another word upsetting upsetting so open die forging is also called upsetting in normal english being upset is being angry being unhappy and so on but this is <clears throat> not the meaning here <clears throat> it has a very special meaning in all of the uh, bulk deformation processes but here just suffice to say that open die forging will also be referred to as upsetting now in the top 3 in the top 3 we are showing a simple open die this is the upper die or punch this is the lower die this is the work piece the original die is d not the original height is h not so it is a cylindrical piece after some time of forging this die increases to d1 and this height decreases to h1 after some more forging time this die increases to d2 and this uh, decreases to h2 so from an original height h not it comes to a final height h2 from an original die of d not it comes to a final die d2 and this is what happens in open die forging if it is a cylindrical piece it will remain cylindrical but the height will decrease and the die or the area will increase below this we are showing the same operation same operation starting with the same press same material same everything d not h not but if you see here after some time when you do this then a sort of a barrel shape happens rather than a straight cylinder similarly after some time the height decreases further but it is still a barrel shape right that is why this effect is called barreling barreling so think why in one case you are doing upset forging and you will get straight cylinders only with bigger die but in the other you will not get cylinders anymore you will get this barrel type of shape think if your answer is friction you are very right if your answer is friction in these ones because of applying any lubricant or whatever there is no friction so the material which is touching the die also expands when you you see when you press it it will expand in die so it expands so the die keeps on increasing here also but if there is a large friction between the material and the die then this material and here they stick together stick so now the material which is sticking cannot expand but the rest of the material because of forging is expanding right so the material which is touching at the top and the bottom of the die does not expand at all and the material in the big in the middle somewhere keeps on expanding so you get a barreling effect this is because of friction and right so there can be friction less open die forging and open die forging with friction